Good morning, Bear Creek, and thank you for worshiping with us today. Please stand and join us for us giving in our praise.
never fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment I don't wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God happening in our lives, any fears, any changes, anything that makes us uneasy. Let us be still. Let us be calm. Let us think of you, Lord, for you are always with us. You're leading us. You're guiding us. You're loving us. You are our refuge. You are our strength. 
you are our protection. We thank you for all you do, Lord. Amen. Let's give God a good hand raise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It's so good to see all of you here on today. What a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. And I tell you what, I'm excited about all that God is doing in our lives. Welcome you that are joining us live stream as well. This is Bear Creek United Methodist Church, a safe, inclusive faith community seeking and growing in Christ's love. How many of you feel the love here? Do you ever just thank God for the love? Yes, I thank God so very much for how much God loves us and how much we love each other and just what's going on here at Bear Creek. Uh, a lot of exciting things. We, we do have, uh, thank God, our second shot scheduled for today at 1 o'clock. You that uh, came the last time, we'll be at it again on today, starting at 1 o'clock. Lupe and I will be taking our second shot. Pray for us. We pray that everything goes smoothly for us on this second one as well. Also, I want to say that uh, Ron Hilton, he's, he's, um, he's usually teaching a class, uh, but how many of you guys know Ron? Ron Hilton? Well, he got the news. I, I, I got a call uh, from my superintendent. Uh, so Ron had been considered by uh, the bishop and the cabinet, and you know he's been going through all uh, that he needed to do so that he can be here at Bear Creek Servant. Well, as of July 4th, it, it comes July 1st, it will be official that Ron Hilton will be assigned here as a local pastor. So we're so excited, right? I mean, that's so excited. He, he was in at the first service. So I, I just want you to know that we're excited for Ron and all that God has been doing in his life. Also this week, uh, the other big thing that happened here at Bear Creek, so you know, we had Robert Besser. Besser. He is the director of, Clerk, of uh, Congregational Excellence at the annual conference office. And so on behalf of the bishop and the cabinet, he also uh, came and he presented me with the Copeland Award. I think we had a picture of that one. Now. He presented me with the Copeland Award. If you never heard of the Copeland Award, it's this. So the Copeland Award is for uh, churches that are really about reaching out to people and it's the number of professions of faith and baptisms that are done in that year. So in our category, average attendance, and everybody's average attendance changed uh, during the pandemic. Um, our average attendance, because of the pandemic, went from the 300 uh, to 500 category to between 1 and 200. So we had 74 churches that were in that category, and Bear Creek was the number one in the professions of faith and baptism. So that was your award. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Uh, I received it on behalf of the church, and on next Sunday, I will present it to uh, Bob Judge on um, on behalf of what God has done in my life to say, hey, it was you. And that's what I, I know. We could not have done it if we were not doing it together. Amen? So it's been an exciting uh, week. We thank God so much for you being here today. Why don't you stand up, look around, see who you haven't seen in a while. I know uh, some of you I've seen you for the first time, and it's, it's good to see you uh, here in worship together. See if you recognize some folks, and uh, just let them know that you, you're happy to see them. You know, you can do a, a wave, an air hug, all that good stuff, okay? That's important. Thank you guys very much. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Come on, Lupe, we're going to um, get ready to give on today. Thank Jeff. Jeff's been playing for us as well. Uh, you've been enjoying that, that lead guitar, right? Is that what it is? What is it? Bass, the bass guitar at bass. I, I heard it, Jeff, you did something special with that first song, didn't you, at the end? I, I heard that. Yes, that was very good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. I saw that. Uh, we appreciate all of you guys. Uh, Oscar is back. He's feeling better. Thank God for David, all of you guys. Yes, so good to have you back, okay? Miss you when you're not here, okay? It's been good. It's uh, 
a wonderful day. We had a uh, 9 o'clock service, and folks are uh, here as well. It's good to see family coming back together like this. We're having more people because I believe, again, with the vaccinations, a lot of you said, you know, once I get my second shot, I'll be there, and it's just been working out for all of us uh, as we worship together. I was telling Lupe, and uh, we, we were discussing it even in the first service, just how much we were grateful, the things we are thinking about what we are grateful for, because it's a lot easier to praise God when you think about what you're grateful for instead of always thinking about what I don't have <laughs> or what, what I need and all this. But think about this week. I mean, if you just think about this week, are there things that you can think about that you're grateful for? I mean, really grateful for what God has done in your life or, or what is going on. I thank God. Thank God so very much. What do you think about when you think about what you're grateful for? Yeah. Life, yeah, yeah. So you think about all those things. Um, and when you start thinking about what you're grateful for, job, yeah, I thank God for that. I mean, that is, that's important, right? I mean, these little things that we seem to not, you know, sometimes take for granted. And that's all I'm asking you to do. Let's not take for granted what God has done. When I think about you, and we couldn't have ever have gotten that award without you, I think about those things. I'm so grateful for Bear Creek, for who we are, how we love each other. I was thinking about even this morning as I was praying and thinking about all the things that are going on in our world and how God has blessed us at Bear Creek to just love each other. I mean, I, I love that even under the midst of all the social unrest and all the things that's going on, that here at Bear Creek, we're loving each other. We, we don't have to look alike. We don't have to believe everything the same. I mean, we have one thing in common, and that is Jesus Christ is Lord. We love each other, and we respect each other. And I appreciate you being that kind of church, and I look forward to seeing more of that in our community, in our world. Can you imagine if everybody, can you imagine if we had a world like Bear Creek, what that would look like? I mean, that's what we want. We want folks loving each other for who we are. I told them this morning, we're not colorblind. It's not like I, I noticed with the kids, even in, in our preschool. They're not colorblind. They really do know that they have different shades. But you know what? There's empathy that they give to each other. There, there's this acceptance that they give to each other, even at that young age. And I think it's because of who we are here at Bear Creek. So continue to give God praise for who we are. And as we give today, think about how grateful we are for what God has done for us. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you because of how good you are to all of us. We only have what you've given to us. And so with our offering, we want to say thank you. It's a thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for our families, our friends. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives. Continue to bless us here as we give, Lord Jesus. As we give to the ministries here, help us, Lord Jesus, that we'll continue to be faithful to you. We praise you and we thank you for it in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so as you give today, smile. Thank you, sweetie. It's prayer time here at Bear Creek, and I love that whenever we pray, we can also consider all the things going on and go to God in prayer. Prayer changes things. Do you believe that? I'm going to ask Jonathan, our youth director, if he would come and offer our prayer today. Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. If you would join me in prayer to our Father. Lord, we come today just in honor of who you are. Father, we want to be reminded that your goodness never stops seeking after us. And so this week, Father, as we get ready to take on the challenges of a new day, we, we ask that you be with us every step of the way. Father, help us to be still and listen to who you are. Because, Father, when we can meditate and just live in your presence, we can fill you in our everyday life. So, Father, we're grateful. We're grateful for the goodness that you give. We're grateful for the nourishment that you provide. And so, Father, we, we love you today, and we celebrate you. And, Father, we pray over each and every family that is represented. We ask that you continue to grow them in you 
And Father God, when something seems hard, they will seek you first. Because we know that you are the great provider. And so, Father, again, we want to just bask in your presence. And as we continue to just lead into this, this sermon series about maturing in you, that we will mature in a way that will draw us closer to you, but also draw us closer to those who are outside of just ourselves. Again, Father, we honor you in this moment. And all we can say in this is thank you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, John. God bless you. Will you stand with me for the word of God, please? Psalm 46. Psalm 46. God is a mighty fortress, always ready to help in times of trouble. And so we won't be afraid. Let the earth tremble and the mountains tumble into the deepest sea. Let the oceans roar and foam and its raging waves shake the mountains. A river and its streams bring joy to the city, which is the sacred home of God Most High. God is in that city and it won't be shaken. He will help it at dawn. Nations rage, kingdoms fall, but at the voice of God, the earth itself melts. The Lord, all-powerful, is with us. The Lord, the God of Jacob, is our fortress. Come, see the fearsome things the Lord has done on earth. God brings wars to an end all over the world. He breaks the arrows, shatters the spears, and burns the shields. Our God says, calm down and learn that I am God. All nations on earth will honor me. The Lord all-powerful is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of God for the people of God, and everyone said, thanks be to God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. This sermon series, as Jonathan was saying, seven essentials for maturing in Christ. Maturing in Christ is part of that second half of our spiritual life as our desire for God increases. It is sad to say that most Christians never transition to this stage of development. As a church, our ultimate goal is to, as Colossians 1.28 says, so that we might present each person mature in Christ. When, mature is, when maturity is related to the holy, to the divine, then our maturity is never absolute, but true to a certain degree. A high degree of maturity can be attained in this life. We believe that. But a final transformation into the likeness of Jesus Christ, well, that comes later. As we read in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, it says, Dear friends, now we are all God's children, and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know that when he appears, when Jesus appears, that we shall be like him because we'll see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves even as he is pure you see the first essential trusting relationships was discussed last week and today that second essential for maturing in Christ practicing dual awareness practicing dual awareness that's the ability to maintain the awareness of two or more aspects of experience simultaneously the best example that I can find in Scripture for us today is in Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, you have the story of a woman that lavished love upon Jesus as she felt safe. 
Listen, knowing that she was both loved much and forgiven much. She puts herself in a position of being accused, belittled, and marked as a sinner as she invited herself to a dinner where Jesus was the guest. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 7, verse 47. He says, quote, So I tell you that all her sins are forgiven, and that is why she has shown great love. This woman stayed in the moment. She stayed in the moment while knowing how folks were labeling her. She stayed in the moment knowing that she is being loved by Jesus and loved him the only way she knew how. But notice, notice what she was able to do. While being aware of how she was being judged, she felt safe. She felt safe. You see, dual awareness is the acceptance of both the past and the present at the same time. It is being aware of where you are in the here and now, separate from your memory of the past. Can you see her? Here she is. She's not stuck in her past. She's not allowing her past to affect her by what folks are saying about her. She's no longer condemning herself, but now she's showing love. Love to the only one that loved her when she didn't, did not, and could not love herself. How can you develop this dual awareness, this ability to maintain the awareness of two or more aspects of experience simultaneously. Well, it started for me back in seminary. I was taking a class in world religions with my professor, Dr. Ruben Habita. Here he was, and he was a Christian, but yet he used his meditation techniques that he had learned from his Zen and his Jesuit trainings. So here at the beginning of every class, he had us to practice five minutes of silence. Can you imagine how difficult that was for me? We progressed to one hour of silence because that was our weekly assignment. This practice begins with sitting still. Feet flat on the floor. Silent. We would imagine ourselves as a mountain sitting very still. And every thought that passed through our mind would be like the clouds. And even as the cloud would go by, you wouldn't focus on the cloud you would just acknowledge it and let it go. Then we would focus on the breath. He always directed us to the breath, the ruha, the spirit. We would breathe in God's holiness and breathe out everything else. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling being silent. If we would become distracted, we would choose a word to focus on, like love, joy, or peace. At the same time, we are aware of what's going on inside and our outer surroundings. It would take us from focusing on ourself with our past judgments and being willing to be whatever our life is. Minus all of our judgments about it, minus our need to struggle to change it. Just being in the presence of God. Not expecting anything. 
This is how it starts. Jesus tells this woman at the end of their encounter, he says, quote, your trust has saved you. Go in peace. First, essential number one, trusting relationships. Secondly, practicing dual awareness. But before you practice dual awareness, there must be an awareness. Anthony DeMello, an Indian Jesuit priest and a psychotherapist, told this story about this gentleman who knocks on his son's door. Jamie, he says, wake up. Jamie answers, I don't want to wake up. The father says, and he shouts this time, get up, you have to go to school. Jamie says, I don't want to go to school. The father says, why not? Jamie says, I'll give you three reasons. First, because it's dull. Second, the kids tease me. And third, I hate school. Jamie's father says to him, well, I'll give you three reasons why you need to go to school. Number one, it's your duty. Number two, you're 45 years old. And number three, you're the headmaster and you're too, you too grown up. You need to wake up. Listen, wake up. You're grown up. Wake up. You're too big to be sleeping. Some point in our spiritual development, we have to wake up. Awareness is that state of being conscious of something. And as Christians, I'm asking you, are you conscious of who you are in Christ? Are you aware that you are deeply loved, completely forgiven, and totally accepted by God? It is so important. As we become aware, it's that ability to know and to perceive, to feel, and to be cog cognizant of our feelings and our attitudes and our behaviors. You may hear these days the words mindfulness. Mindfulness, we, we're, we're teaching our children how to be mindful. There are three, key, three keys, a key characteristics of mindfulness. Number one is intention to cultivate awareness. It's repeating the process. You have to practice it. Number two is attention to what is occurring in the moment. It is simply observing your thoughts, your feelings, and your sensations as they arise. And then number three is an attitude that is non-judgmental, one that is curious and one that is kind. In our scripture today, verse 10 says, and this is God speaking, God says, be still. Be still, be calm, see and understand that I am, he says, the true God. Today we are discussing not only awareness, but dual awareness. That ability to maintain, again, two aspects or more of experience simultaneously. Some years ago, an event triggered some feelings of abandonment within me. It brought me all the way back to when I was six years old. My sister Debbie, who was only 12 at the time, who was my surrogate, surrogate mother, my caretaker, my nurturer, she suffered a ruptured appendix and did not arrive at the hospital in time for surgery. She died January the 2nd, 1970. Losing Debbie created this huge hole in my heart that was then filled with fear, loneliness, anger, but most of all, abandonment. Imagine me, this six-year-old 
that had no way of processing that much pain. Fast forward to the present, and here I am able to practice dual awareness. I'm able to be aware of who I am now, confident, loved, not alone, safe. But at the time, at the same time, I can empathize with this six-year-old inside that feels the hurt and the loss of a sister who was his nurture, who was the one that was his safety net. I was able to offer to that part of me confidence, safety, and assurance that you will be loved and not abandoned. It's all because I received over the years. Even some of you have helped me with that. To give me love, to give me that assurance, and so that I can offer that confidence to that part of me that was underdeveloped. There I was. I was experiencing a memory, a very strong memory with lots and lots of pain without allowing myself to think that I was back being that six-year-old. That's dual awareness. I was able to offer myself the opposite. I was able to offer comfort to that part of me that was once wounded. I want the best for you. And therefore, this week, I'm asking you, when you find yourself feeling upset over a hurt in the past or a wrongdoing, I want you to allow yourself to stay in the present. I want you to practice being still, being calm, seeing and understanding God's love. That you are loved and that you are forgiven. Too many times I've seen individuals, I know you've had somebody get angry at you, and they lash out at you, and it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> nothing to do with you. I want us to say to ourselves, when we find ourselves there, I'm feeling upset. Just say to yourself, I'm feeling upset right now, but I'm still safe. I'm still safe. I'm in a trusting relationship, and, I'm, and you may want to say, I may be right now having a flashback of the past, of a past hurt or some wrongdoing, but what's going on with me right now has to do with something from my past and is not happening right now. Allow yourself to be aware that you are loved by God right now and that you are in a trusting relationship with God, with yourself, and with others. The scripture says, and I think we definitely need to understand what God is saying here. God is within us. God is dwelling in what God called his sacred home. Your heart. Your heart. God is dwelling in his sacred home, and the scripture says, it will not be shaken. It will not be shaken. I want you to know you can be accepting of the past and the present at the same time, and that God will be your refuge. God will be your shelter. God will be your protection, and God will be your comfort. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to be in the present and able to experience a memory without getting lost 
in that memory. Thank you so very much for allowing us to feel safe, confident, loved. And when memories come up that are difficult, we're able to stay in the present and offer that safety to our wounded parts. Only because of who you are to us. If you don't know Jesus Christ as that one that loves you, that cares about you, then I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me right now. Say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins come into my life be my Lord and be my Savior in Jesus name Amen if you prayed that prayer you know that's the first part of making the commitment the second part of that commitment is maintaining this relationship if you want to maintain this relationship with Jesus Christ guess what you're going to need help and that's why we're here together I love Bear Creek. I love that we're here for each other. And if you need someone with you, you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. Please text me, 832-773-4901. Just text connect. I love to connect with you. You don't have to be alone in this journey. Allow God to be with you. Will you do that? God is a good God. Amen? Amen. Will you stand with me as we... Think about this week and what God has in store for us. I'm going to ask that you do this this week. I'm going to ask if you would just allow yourself to be still. Practice dual awareness. Allow yourself to stay in the present. Be aware of what's going on. And yet know that God is with you right where you are. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. I love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome week. You may be seated and go out at the back as they usher lead you. So just enjoy the worship as we leave here today and know that God is with you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. Roaring with power.